You probably know I buy a lot of whiskey and most of it's great because I do a ton of research and I don't want to waste my money. But what about the whiskeys I don't spotlight? The whiskeys you find on the bottom shelf. So I asked all of you on Instagram and Discord, which whiskeys are the ones you regret buying? Which are the whiskeys that you dislike the most? And I've made a list of the five most common whiskeys that might be the five worst whiskies. But the question is, are these whiskies actually bad? What if some of these awful cheap whiskies are actually hidden budget gems that you should actually buy, especially now that whiskey's getting so expensive? And this is where it gets interesting. I'm gonna blind taste them all, rank them from best to worst, and see if any of these whiskies deserve a spot on your shelf or if it'll just be a hilarious disaster. Oh. Oh god. Ugh. To the bottles. So the first bottle is the incredibly famous and polarizing whiskey, the Proper 12. It was first introduced in 2018 and backed by the infamous MMA fighter Conor McGregor and it made an absolute fortune. It's a blended Irish, it's triple distilled, it's aged for four years in bourbon barrels, so it, it's not 12 years old. I mean it's called Proper 12 but it's not a proper 12 year old whiskey. It's four. It's a proper four year old whiskey. Probably should be, shouldn't it? It's 40% and this one comes in at $45 New Zealand. The next bottle we're looking at is the Glen Murray. And Glen Murray are really well known for making super affordable whiskies. This one has spent the last eight months of its maturation in former Chardonnay casks. And that's really not that common in Scotch whiskey. You don't really see a lot of that. So it's a single malt, it's bottled at 40%. It's from Speyside, Scotland. And this one comes in at $58. Next we have the Red Label. It's a part of the Johnny Walker family. It's sold in over 180 countries and it's one of the world's best selling scotch whiskies. So this is a blended scotch whiskey so it's made with a combination of over 30 malt and grain whiskies. It's bottled at 40%. My one litre was uh, $47 and the region is, well just, I mean it's a blended whiskey so Scotland. Just all Scotland. So the next bottle is the Tomatin Legacy. So this is another budget single malt whiskey with no age statement. It's matured in a combination of ex-bourbon and virgin oak casks. It's a Highland single malt whiskey, but it sits on the border with Speyside. So some people call it Speyside. The ABV is 43%. This is the only whiskey on this list that's 43%. And it's $64. So even though it's still like pretty cheap, uh, it's actually the most expensive whiskey on this list today. And last of all, we have the globally recognized J&B Rare. So I actually don't think it's really that rare because it's everywhere. Not quite rare and the proper 12 is not quite a 12 year old. There's, there's a few weird things going on here. This is a blended Scotch whiskey, so this is made with a combination of over 40 different grain and malt whiskies. It's bottled at 40%. If you were to buy one litre, it would be $50. Okay, so I've got all those bottles we just talked about right here. And what I've done is I've put all these little stickers on them. Yeah. And then I've got five glasses with a corresponding sticker on it. And rather than me pouring them, I'm gonna let my wife pour them uh, so that it's definitely blind. You guys know it's blind. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so now time for the blind tasting. Let's figure out if some of these whiskeys maybe you should buy, or maybe they're all just terrible. But before we do that, we need to thank today's sponsor, which is Tiege Hanley. There's two things. One is when you drink lots of whiskey, you need to drink a lot of water because whiskey dehydrates you. That's why I always drink water when I'm drinking whiskey. The other thing is it dehydrates your skin. And so what do you do for your skin? And I know from my analytics, a lot of you who watch this channel are males. And I know a lot of you males, you don't do anything for your skin. And you should because Tej Hanley make top quality affordable skincare that's not overcomplicated because they just equip you with the essentials. So if you wanted to dip your toes in the skincare, see what it's all about, I recommend the Level 1 system. It's got everything you need. It's got a daily face wash, exfoliating scrub, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 and a PM moisturizer. At the advanced levels, you get other things like the eye cream, which is great for someone like me with very young kids. And if you're like me and you're new to skincare, this is probably my favorite part. They give you this nifty guide card in each box and tells you what, when, and how much to use. It's so handy. They've also got 7,000 five-star reviews globally. And for those joining the Tej Hanley community, there are a lot of great perks, like 20% off regular prices, there's monthly deals, you can easily pause or cancel your subscription. And for those in the US, you get free shipping. Now, because you're part of the First Fill fam, they've whipped up a special deal just for you. It's 30% off your first box. And 
you get a free gift. So if you've been sidelining your skin, especially if you drink lots of whiskey and you're dehydrated, uh, make sure you click the link down in the description and start your skincare journey today. So standard number one, definitely got a lot of youth to it. It's young, spirity. Behind that, you got some like fruit, apple, pears. This nose is actually not bad. For the first one, I was sort of expecting to start off like the nose would be terrible, but we'll go into the second one. Okay, it smells like burnt plastic. I feel like a really strong like pencil shavings. If you got a pencil and you ground it up into a blender, I feel like that's what that would be. Not sure about that one. The middle one, it's got kind of a metallic note. Not sure if I love this one either. I mean, it's quite, it's quite subtle. Vanilla, like nail polish remover. We'll go into the next one. Whoa, this one's quite different actually. A lot of youth to it, real young. Pineapple's the first thing getting that stands out. Um, almost like an Indian whiskey. Lychee. Behind that, some other white fruits, maybe like lemon. The last one. They're subtle. Basic red fruits. I don't know if there's smoke there or not. Or my... Apparently, good tactic. If you sniff your elbow, kind of like resets your nose. Turns it off and on again. Especially for someone like me. I actually broke my nose when I was a kid. Um, I was on a flying fox and I was at a birthday party. I think I was like 10 years old and went up the flying fox and then came down and snapped. Broke both my arms and my nose. It's not good. I'm like the injury child of the family. All you guys keep asking about my finger. What happened to your finger? I got so many comments. What happened to my finger? So if you want to know how I got these scars. You want to know how I got these scars? Maybe I should do a video on that. If you guys are interested, I'm just like a whiskey banter video. Let me know. Short story is, is that people broke into my house. Um, that's the teaser. That's the hook. Let me know if that's something you want to hear about. Uh, where are we up to? The palette. The initial arrival was quite nice. Like just a classic scotch flavors, really good. Okay, next one. Oh. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it definitely needs to be in a cocktail, or whatever that is. It's got the smoky note that kind of holds it together, but if it wasn't for that smoky note, Oh man, taste is subjective. I'm sure some of you guys like this whiskey, but that is just not hitting it for me. Mm. Very thin whiskey, very thin, metallic. Not a huge fan of that. Oh yeah. This one's standing out, I think. The nose on this and the nose on the first one, I do like. And it has this kind of weird aftertaste again, this sort of like plasticky. And I think that's probably just a youth thing. I think that's probably just a young thing. I, but I think overall, this actually isn't as bad as these two, that's for sure. Oh, I don't love it. I feel like it's getting worse. I actually thought initially this is my favorite, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to come back to that. Okay, and the last one. That is watery. <laughs> it's always the finish. The finish is just no good on all of any of these. It's so thin. It's, it's like you get the flavor profile and you go, Mew, boop, and it's like just that center bit. To be honest, I don't think this is bad. I just think it's really boring. It's probably fine in like a highball or something. I can imagine it'll be fine. You'll get that little bit of alcohol, a little bit of whiskey coming through. So let's try and rank these ones. Let's see which one's best, which one's worst. I like this one. It's just that sour aftertaste. I'll do this one again. Oh boy. Oh, I think I need to reset my palate. Next one, I'm also getting that sort of like fake perfume, like toilet spray. You're doing your stinky and you need a spray to make it not stinky. Got a really nice pineapple-y note. I think this has a better nose. I don't know, they're, they're kind of similar. I actually think these two are not too bad. Last one, it's not bad. It's not great. It's just real bland. You guys recommended some, they're not great. But what I do want to do is get a whiskey that's I know it's good. See if it's just me, like, I don't know. Maybe my palette's off. Okay, we've got some Aaron 18 here. Let's see how it compares. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that is, you don't want to be a, like a snob or anything. Like that's not the goal of this video. But there really is a difference, which I'm kind of glad to see. Like for all I've talked about on this channel and stuff about like seeking out quality whiskeys, straight away that nose is just, it's like you've gone from a, a single violin to a whole orchestra. Last round before I do my rankings. So I'm pretty confident that I know what these whiskeys are. So in first place, I think is this one here. My gut is that this is the Glen Murray. In second place, I think is the Tamartin. 
um, the very pineapple one. Third place, I think, is probably the red label. You basically got metallic versus pencil shavings. <laughs> this is last. It must be the JB rear. I think this one will be the proper 12. Okay, so from best to worst. To Martin, number two. Johnny Walker, proper 12. JB rear. Okay, so now time for the big reveal. Have I got the whiskeys right? Um, but this is not really meant to be about guessing, it's about whether I like the whiskies. Little orange sticker, and the orange, Glen Murray. Glen Murray, fantastic. Second place for me, so it's gotta be the other uh, single malt, Tomatin, and that's green. I think what's quite good about this, I mean, I don't know, I've done the last three, but because they're like single malts and some are uh, blended whiskies and some are Irish whiskies, it's made this kind of easy for me to guess, I think, because I think it's a little bit more obvious. I think if I had like five single malts, it would be a little bit different. I'm gonna go off the red label. Yeah, 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 makes sense. It's not bad. It's, it's just very mediocre. Like it wouldn't ruin any cocktails. Like you would get that scotchiness added to it. But if you're drinking it neat, like I think go for the black label. Um, go for the green label, maybe. Okay, this one's getting that metallic, that nail polish. So I think it probably is the proper 12. That's proper 12. Which means the last one, the one that I really didn't like, J&B Rare. Okay, so what is my overall consensus for this? Uh, well, I do think the first two whiskeys for the price I paid, I don't think they were that bad. It's a little bit annoying because I feel like it's kind of goes into the stereotype that single malt is better than blended whiskey. In this case, it was better. As I've said on the channel, there are blended whiskies out there that are very, very good. And in fact, I think there's lots of Johnny Walkers that are much better. So should you buy the Glen Murray? I think you probably should. For like $58, the Glen Murray comes in. I think this is a buy, actually. I think it's actually not bad. Um, I can see why some people put off, but when I take into the price, I'm like, if I want just a budget banger, I think the Glen Murray is pretty good. What about the Tomatin? Well, the Tomatin in my market was a little bit more expensive and because it came in second, maybe it wouldn't be a buy for me. But I think some of you, if you like that pineapple note and that sort of thing, that lychee note, maybe you will like it. Thirdly, the red label. I can see why this is on every bar everywhere because it's very unoffensive. It's very boring. It doesn't have any character, any personality. Proper 12, I wouldn't get this whiskey. I'd probably go for a Jameson over this, to be honest. And the JMB, I just didn't like. There's a nice smoky note in it, but apart from that, <laughs> I don't think it's got any redeeming qualities. But of course, this is my personal opinion. This is my preference. And what I think is really interesting, especially bringing the Aaron into it, is I do think there's something really good about just going back to a bad whiskey, especially if you're someone who spends a lot on whiskey and you drink lots of nice whiskies. Sometimes drinking a whiskey that's, you know, it's kind of average, uh, can really make a whiskey like the Aaron 18 taste incredible. It, it really kind of grounds you and then it makes you respect those nicer whiskies a lot more. Thanks to all you guys on my Discord and my Instagram for, is that, thank you for putting me through this? I guess so. Thanks you guys. Thanks again to T Shanley for sponsoring this video. Make sure you click the link in the description and check them out. Beauty.